By the time I started watching, it was progressing. No more, no more, no more. And it got to the point that I was watching something. I was like, whoa! Oh, yeah. oh, na, na. oh, na, na. yeah, hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you've watched the previous video, and good day to you if you've not watched the previous video. This is a fairly new channel and today I'll be doing a movie review. The movie is an adapted movie from um, a novel. The novel is Redeeming Love. If you've read Redeeming Love at least general, on a general scale, if you've watched Redeeming you would have been excited to watch the movie but as it turned out when the movie was released early this year um, people received it with mixed feelings just it wasn't just one one way i mean reaction like movie the movie is good maybe movie is bad everybody had something else to say yeah so if you're asking me what was my reaction towards watching the movie, I was very, very, very excited to watch the movie. I wanted to see Francine Weaver's works because I like her novels, definitely. Um, I have read almost all her novels, even though I'm still yet to read Lady's Mind. It's a new novel which released it not so long ago. I think this year too. Yeah, so. Um, I later had a chance to see the movie, and by the time I started watching, it was progressing no more, no more, no more. And it got to the point that I was watching something, I was like, Whoa! I was shocked. Yeah, but then I had to come down, like, Why are you shocked? Because you've read the novel, and this movie is a fairly good representation of what you read in the novel. So why are you shocked? So I understand people's um, grievances and some sort of reactions. Some people were saying that this shouldn't have been in the movie. This is a Christian movie. This is a faith-based faith movie. This is this. This is that. Someone even went there to say that. Right? Yeah. So one of the persons directing the movie production is a Christian, yeah, so I know what to expect and everything. Excuse me, let me shock you. This is one of the reasons why our Christian movies are tagged lame, cheesy, thick, and everything. Because what you, once you watch a movie, it's fairly predictable. You already know what was going to happen next because it's a Christian movie. I don't know if Christian movies have a definition or a template where um, a template that has to be followed like this is our Christian movie is but definitely whether there's a template or not we all know it when you are about to see a Christian movie there's this expectation yeah so that explains my shock this movie is not just to expose the sex trafficking industry which of course is eaten by Hollywood and all these people. They are not represented. I mean, it's just as if like they just want to keep these things eating. Like, yeah, this world is just fine. There's nothing wrong with this world. And they just keep giving you movies that fuels your ego, motivates you. Uh well, in some ways motivates you. But Movies that really deals with issues, they don't show you all the reasons. So, needless to say, I was super shocked. But, um, I wrote a review on my website. I'll put the link down below, you can go and read it. But before you go do that, um, I'm going to read out some people's comments on IMDb, on Facebook, and everywhere else where I found comments on the movie. Okay, this person titles a review a dark love story with forgiveness. In any other world, 
Abigail Cohen would be nominated for an Oscar. It is a lot to ask for for a young man to go from broken flower to lady and it is a story of redemption but alas we are in Hollywood and therefore they can't support a Christian story. Boy would they be surprised. This movie is dark and ugly and has brutal realities much like the Bible which we have often forget is really horrifying. I used to say this too like you see stories in the Bible where um, a prostitute is caught up I mean somebody's concubine is caught up into 12 different places and then she's sent to the 12 tribes in Israel to see what has been done what abomination has been done is that not horrifying a young girl is so to a pimp and is broken and emotionally empty who then finds a kindly farmer who shows her the path to a decent life Yes, the academy doesn't recognize this inspiring story unless a eating makes it or the industry that hides sex traffickers. Another one says, This is not a movie you take the church, I mean, sorry, the youth group to see by any means. But I would still consider this a fate film and would recommend it to any adult. Even as a believer, I'm not one to usually get excited about Christian movies because I cringe at the usual clean cuts, fakeness of it all. I think the portrayal of the human condition often gets a good scrub down and the turnaround for the better is often displayed as a quick miracle. While I believe in next day miracles, God most of the time performs his miracle of sanctification making us like him after countless mistakes and second chances, years of prodigal betrayal, attempts at running away, and intentional sin. Isn't Christianity all about God being the covenant keeper? So, 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 so. Yeah, that's another one. This one here says, The MPAA rated Redeeming Love PG-13, rated PG-13 for mature thematic content sexual content, partial nudity, and strong violent content. That's it. For this comment, I think I have to put in my actor skills. A bit searching at certain points, but overall full of annoying overused sin should have done better. This film starts with a bunch of people searching gold sand at the river, and a bunch of men waiting to meet prostitutes sin. As turned out, this film is about a farmer Michael fell in love with a prostitute angel. Entire film full of boring conversation and annoying overuse scene, such as overuse of the walking scene, overuse of the searching scene, overuse of the arguing scene, overuse of the calling name scene, overuse of the staring scene, overuse of the drinking scene, overuse of the eating scene. Overuse of the riding wagon scene, overuse of the flashback scenes, overuse of the line on the bed scene. Ah, oh, I think I'm done with this overuse. This person says, surprisingly good. I'm a Christian, but I had a lot of ifs going into this movie. One, being profanity, and two, sexual content. But the movie ended up being very good, even though I think it should have been rated R. Brace yourself, this movie sucked. Redeeming Love 2022 is based on a novel that I've never read. So I went to this theme know nothing and this movie was hot garbage. The only positive that I have for this film is that the production value and costume were good. Everything else was terrible. I mean this film is filled with all of the traditional cliches in every romantic drama film or TV show. The acting, the story and screenplay is god awful. Overall, Redeeming Love 2022 is a waste of time. Here's another one. Held back from greatness by being too bloated. Redeeming Love is definitely a departure from DJ, DJ Caruso's typical film and it's nowhere near as bad as many reviews are reviling it as. The cinematography alone disqualifies this movie from being caught bad. Flashback scenes are deliberately oversaturated to have a fuzzy dreamlike quality to them 
and even the film's more uneventful moments never actually bored me because they were always nice to look at. Additionally, the performances range from competence to outstanding, with no one giving less than 100%. Logan Marshall Green, in particular, steals the show with the limited screen time that is given. I think it's, she's talking about poor. Maybe her E or she was talking about poor here. As for the story and screenplay, it's a mixed bag. When the story is allowed to focus on the main character, it's actually kind of beautiful. Angel is given tremendous opportunity to grow as a character, and watching her slowly and realistically struggle to do what she thinks is the right answer after a lifetime of horror and abuse, it's powerful stuff. The problem is that the great stuff is only about 40 to 50% of the one type. This is a lengthy movie with a great deal of repetition involved. There are probably over a dozen characters. Oh my God, you can read it yourself. Thank you. Should have been a mini series. This book was too good for a two hour film. I absolutely loved it. And I saw it with tissues in one hand and popcorn in the other. But there was so much more to each of these characters and their backstories. Like Paul and the shop owner, I was already in love with Tom Lewis from Gentleman Jack. This movie showed he has the charm and swagger of Matthew McConaughey. Oh my God. The actress that played a young angel was stunning. She did a fantastic job. Abigail Cohen looks like a young Nicole Kidman and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of her. And to taste atheist, tricked by preview, enjoyed the movie but conflicted. I think that's a good thing. As a former born again Christian, who now strongly rejects the indoctrination of anyone with faith based ideology, I mostly enjoyed this movie. Except when I was cringing during the four or five quick mentions of God or the Bible. Bro, you got to serve into something. <laughs> I would not have watched this if the preview clearly showed the religious propaganda. If this movie was secularized, I would probably rate this inspirational love story with an 8 or 9. Struggling with and overcoming life's many, sometimes horribly traumatic challenges. With help from good people is a compelling story that often moves me to tears end of review. This is why I strongly prefer critical thinking and logic. Science adjusts its views based on what's observed. Faith is the denial of observation so that belief can be preserved. Not me. This is not me talking. It's somebody's review. This could be a shock for somebody who hadn't read the novel and I really understand. Okay, everybody understands. Because um, for a faith-based movie, there's this cliche of how a faith-based movie must look like, how it must sound like, what must be there, the progression, and everything like that. You just don't expect anything else from the normal. So once it's tagged faith-based movie, there's an expectation that you want to be met. And then um, also, Actually, there are some people that really are battling addiction, some addiction like maybe porn addiction and masturbation and everything. So on in the process of that, they want to stay away from um, sexual content and everything that just kind of like triggers that thing they are trying to get away from. Yeah, so I think normally people like that um a background research for any movie would be good